learned a few weeks back we're going around fair ahead that if you think things are exact on a boat you're an idiot <laughs> it's the season approximate thing at the best of times so a good approximation is the way to go yeah so what we're we doing Bev? um making a lead line uh-huh i've got a heavy weight and some rope and some tape now the old sailors used to have a bit of string, uh, two bits of string, a bit of coloured fluff, and they can actually tell in the dark what they were holding. We're not going to go for anywhere near as advanced as that. We're just going to go for a bit of white tape starting at four metres, and then we'll have one at five metres, one at six metres, and maybe one at seven metres. Mm. That's it. Because really, three metres is the minimum we would ever anchor in, because two for the keel plus one underneath it. So let's get the tape on. No, I just, I'll redo my count because I'm off now. One, two, three, four. So that is a point. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be too exact. No, it doesn't. We're on the bottom. I can feel it. There. That's the bottom. Just uh -huh. there. Uh -huh. Well, you can see the five metre tape. It's the double one, and just down under the water, there's where it gets wet. It's, it's dry from this point up, so we're about there. Yeah. Four and a half meters? Something like that. So we're in four and a half meters here. And if we're 0.7 above chart datum because it's low tide, then four and a half, take off 0.7 is 3.7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, last time I was in Millport, I had to go at a, a rope swing. I can tell you now, there's a rope swing here. And I'm not tempted at all. <laughs> I need the well otter to be at least oh, balmy 20 or something like that before I'm jumping off one of them. You can jump off what you like. I cannot believe you're standing making me film this. Oh. Oh, well, that curtailed our activities a bit, didn't it? <sighs> what? Struggling to get salty sausage on? With the um, the bum of the yacht going up and down. Like well, I'm sure it's quite obvious in the camera that, I mean, it's not too bad at the minute it's calmed down, but a few seconds ago the uh, pier was going up and down behind you. Yeah. It was a bit hitchhikery. You know, you're, you're perfectly still and the whole world's washing up and down. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So, uh, but she's also secured now. I've no idea what we're going to do now, but that's salty last life. It's just crazy. Time for coffee? Absolutely, girl. Now it's... I've just looked at um, the weather forecast. Do bear in mind that the weather forecast for um, uh, need, uh, needs to come out, but to Channel 14 is now going five to seven later. Um, that's, so, that's in the next 12 hours and that's in the next 12 hours mm -hmm. and this was a, issued at 12 UTC so we're waiting for the 6 o'clock so 5 to 7 starts midnight 5 to 7 starts midnight so um, that's force 5 to 7 not five. that's force 5 to 7 so it might be that Fuck. what we'll do Bloody, hang on I need to hold on right go on <laughs> I think what we're going to do is we might go to um, logs early and then when we come out, you will finally do the anchoring for all this sounding we've done. Got to do something. This is driving me mad. <laughs> right. Anyway, so over there, hard to see from this distance, but there's Kerry and Mr. Day. Yeah. Oh, dude. I think we're beating it out of a bowl because I... Jesus. <laughs> I'm glad that our boat has handholds. <laughs> no. I can stand here and film you while I'm on the grab rail. Yeah. So 
Yeah, I've, I've never seen Millport so rawly. This is definitely a very, very bad direction. Um, but like I say, the um, storm, which we were going to go in for Thursday anyway, I think the storm is coming a bit earlier uh, because it's now for midnight. Yeah. And at midnight, I want to be tucked up in bed. Thank you very much. Not on an anchor. Well, we'll give him a shout at large, see if we can get a birth number before we leave here. It sounds like a plan, Bev. But dinner first. Or do you want to go and get dinner there? They're going to charge you the same. Uh, we'll, we'll have a think about it, but not on camera. Right. I'm just off the floor to Largs. <laughs> we're in Perth Echo 35. And as soon as we've had our carry, we're off. <laughs> it's like a roller coaster in here tonight, isn't it? It's... Oh, it is. But I have to tell you now, your hair is just something ah, else. It's going to pale tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Good on, Gain. Well, we bought some more dry mat at Largs just because they have it in stock um, at the Chandlers, which um, one of the reasons that you do come in is for good Chandlers, um, but uh, and as well as washing and showers. But uh, we bought some more dry mat and we've decided that we're going to put some in the back berth because it's doing such a good job in the uh, V berth. Um, but we've decided that we're going to go to Liverpool because we're going to do a boat lift and there's quite a few areas that will be needing varnish and all sorts of stuff. Nothing major on the TLC, but um, yeah, some more bits of TLC are going to happen to Salty Lads. <laughs> So why are you apprehensive, Bev? Um, we're on a mirroring with a lee shore very close behind us. Um, and there's the storm is blowing in. That's one of these is going to come through very quickly. Uh, in three or four hours it could be calm here. All the other boats have fled the anchorage, except us. Um, the mirroring is rated to 15 tonnes, which is far, far more than we are. And the sea state is moderate. It's bouncing a bit. If it doesn't get any worse, I'll be happy, but I'm concerned. I'm on a marine ball with a lee shore 100 metres behind me, so you can probably hear the engine running in the background. Uh, that's just purely precautionary. If this mooring parts, I basically run up there and push the throttle lever forward, and we just go forward and, and deal with it as we go. I have my sharp knife at hand, in case I need to cut ropes or anything like that. But we're bouncing... That was the toilet seat, my fault. Um, we're bouncing like a cork in here. I've come in for a quick cup of tea and then I'm going to go back out and just keep an eye on things. Um, we've got a drag alarm running, we've got the engine running. I probably should have released the clutch on the anchor so I could just push it over the edge if the worst came to the worst, but I didn't think to do that and I've now got marine ropes all over the anchor locker. So, so it's cup of tea time and just hope that um, the sea state doesn't get any worse. The wind will get worse, uh, we're expecting about 4-7. Um, just have to get through it. Yeah, the other option could have been to stay at Largs, 
I'll be honest, I felt like Largus was picking the pocket. I couldn't believe the prices they were charging. It was like being on the south coast. Um, I couldn't afford to stay at Largus. <laughs> okay, you might say, well, you know, another night at Largus is cheaper than your boat going into the pier and things, but if I really believe this mirroring is going to part, if I honestly believe that deep in my water, I'd be in Largus. Um, but it's a 15 ton mirroring, we're about a 7 ton boat, all in with all our fuel, gubbins and things inside. Um, I've got the engine running, so I've taken what precaution I can. This area, um, the water shallows two, three hundred metres out from here, so I'm hoping that all the breaking and the, and the rolling of waves happens two, three hundred metres out. The tide is due to drop fairly soon, and that means that the little islands we're behind should give us some shelter from the, the sea state. I think if we get through the next two or three hours, things will improve dramatically, but that's where we are. Well, it's still a windy day. It is a very windy day. Sorry, um, I should emphasize, it's a different windy day. It's a different windy day, but I was just thinking what a difference a day makes. Um, yesterday, we had um, 30 knots of wind. Um, we were still on a mooring, um, but um, it was coming from the south, which is not a great place for this mooring. So it meant that um, the bay was a lee shore, which is why Beverly put the engine on. Um, but um, we didn't have that much room to manoeuvre. Now, now it's a different windy day, but now the wind is coming from the land. And one of the things I have learned from all this experience and stuff like that, that don't worry so much about the wind. The boat can handle the wind. What the boat has struggles with is the sea state. Because the land wind is coming from the land, the sea state is mild it's just like a little bit of sway and that's about it and we're happy as larry so happy that you've got a whole pile of screws in front of you well i've just got these little things always tidying up the boat getting rid of things making sure that i've only got the minimum amount of stuff um so i've just tidied up the cupboards in the front um i bought um, some stay put and um, I've now sort of put that at the back of the cupboards as well, just so that they're slightly away from the back of the cupboards because they get chilled. So I've done all that. I, I bought some little plastic bags. So I'm sorting out my screws, just refining and bringing down. This whole life is not a case of being big. It's a big life, but it's a very small space. So you have to be very precise as to what you have in it.